In front of me, I have some of the most heavily armored vehicles available in Grand Theft Auto Online that you can store in your own personal garages. We have the Night Shark, the Insurgent Pickup Custom, and the Half Track. All three of these armored vehicles are able to survive an absolute beating. Upwards of 27 homing missiles requiring to blow them up, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Not only do they have a ridiculous amount of missile resilience, but some of them have even better capabilities. For example, if we pull out a vehicle like the Insurgent Pickup Custom, this truck can drop proximity mines, which is pretty cool. You can see me drop a proximity mine right there, and then if you are to drive over this proximity mine, it will blow up, and it does the same damage as a sticky bomb. So that's really, really dangerous. It also has a minigun on the roof. You can't really use the minigun unless you have somebody else driving the vehicle. I mean, you can use it stationary like this, but it's pretty useless to use the minigun stationary. You usually want to have somebody else driving the vehicle, but yeah, there's some cool capabilities for the Insurgent Pickup Custom. But it also has one major downside, and that is the fact that the glass, well, it's completely just non-existent. You can shoot through the glass at any angle on this vehicle, and the bullets will go right through to the other side. The half-track solves that problem. The glass on the front of this vehicle is completely bulletproof. Yes, I know that it looks like it got shattered through, but you can still see the bullets are actually hitting that front pane, and uh, you can see the little spark on it. Now, the side you can shoot through, so you should keep that in mind, but the front is completely bulletproof on this vehicle, which is kind of cool. The Aftrek also features a ridiculously dangerous machine gun, which will do quick work to any armored vehicle in the game, which is super, super impressive. So the Aftrek has a really dangerous machine gun. Again, though, you can only use the machine gun if there's usually somebody else driving the vehicle. And the Aftrek, I should mention, also features proximity mines. So you can place these down, and then if somebody is to drive over them, they will blow up. Both of these vehicles are dangerous. In terms of killing people, I'm not going to say they're all too efficient unless you have somebody else on the vehicle. And the problem is you can very easily with one explosion just kill the person on either the back of the half truck or on top of the insurgent pickup custom. So then we arrive to the final of the bunts. This is the Night Shark. Now the Night Shark is usually a fan favorite. It is incredibly fast. It's actually really good on handling and it features the most armor out of the bunch. It's the smallest. It's got a lot of potential. The Night Shark has a couple problems. First of all, the armor plates do literally nothing. In fact, you're much better off not having the armor plates. I made a video on this a couple months ago, but essentially you are getting just flat out downsides with the armor plates on this vehicle. Personally, I have them on because they look nicer, but you can see that shooting the edge of these plates, you still go right through. Now the front, this panel here, does actually count as an armored panel. But behind it, none of this counts. You can see that here. You break right through the glass. It's also the same for the back of this vehicle as well. So having the armor paneling on this vehicle is completely useless, and it's a fully cosmetic thing. The problem is it stops you from being able to use sticky bombs and personal weapons when driving this vehicle. So essentially, when it comes to the Night Shark, please do not put the armor upgrades on this vehicle. It's just a waste. As I said, I have it on because I think it looks nicer, and I don't ever pull this vehicle out. But yeah, for for anybody that's actually planning on using a heavily armored vehicle, the Night Shark is good. It just doesn't really have great uh, bulletproof protection. And that's where we arrive to these three vehicles in front of me. Amani Tech cars. Amani Tech vehicles are a lot more stylish. And if I were to line these up next to each other, the average player would always think that these three cars we just took a look at are more armored. And in certain senses, they are. All of those vehicles are able to survive 27 homing missiles, where the Amani Tech vehicles are only able to survive 10. But, in my opinion, they are much better, even in the homing missile survival department. Let's start off with, in my opinion, the worst of the bunch, which is the Dubachi Champion. The Amani Tech vehicles have different classifications and different ways that they are armored, which is actually quite cool and unique, allowing you to kind of have your own custom style of vehicle. See, the Dubachi Champion, followed by the Buffalo STX, in my opinion, are kind of the best of both worlds, but also the worst of both worlds when it comes to Amani Tech vehicles. You see, the Dubachi Champion is fast. It's a supercar. It's got good handling. It's about the same speed as an Adder, so 124 miles per hour, already faster than any of those armored vehicles we took a look at. And the best part about the Champion is that it features semi-bulletproof glass. It's not completely bulletproof, but if somebody is trying to kill you and they're just spraying at you, it's obviously going to be very, very hard to clear 
you because of the fact that this glass is semi-bulletproof. That's the first thing that's great about the Champion, but it gets better. This vehicle also can survive six sticky bombs and 10 homing missiles. Now this vehicle features a homing lock-on jammer. What that means is let's say you're an Oppressor Mark II, you're in an F-160 Raiju, and you see somebody driving down the road and you want to kill them for some reason. Well, if you try to hit this vehicle with homing missiles while there is somebody driving it, that is completely impossible because they won't home. Essentially, if you're using a homing missile, it will look like this. It'll just be you've got to basically hope that you're a really good shot and you're able to hit this car. But you have to hit it 10 times. Yeah, that's where Amani Tech vehicles become insane. I can easily pull out any type of homing missile vehicle, a Sparrow for all I care, and just spam homing missiles over and over and over at a vehicle like the Insurgent Pickup Custom, or at the Night Shark, the Half Track, and eventually I will be able to wield them down and take them out because the homing missiles will hit. These aren't fast vehicles, they're not the most maneuverable, especially the Half Track. And while these vehicles do have proximity mines, the question is, how effective are those proximity mines going to be against Oppressor Mark IIs, against jets, against helicopters? They're not going to be. These vehicles are going to be great against any ground attacks because of the fact that they do survive upwards of six sticky bombs because of the fact that they are really fast, because of the fact they're much more maneuverable. But they're also going to be way better against air attacks. I would say that all Amani Tech vehicles are basically air resistant to a point where you're never going to die from a jet. The only type of jet you'll have to be careful about is ones that feature explosive machine guns. If you have a player that's skilled enough that is able to do a proper strafing run, they obviously can use the explosive MG to try to blow you up. But one thing I should point out is that explosive MGs do about the same damage as an explosive sniper, meaning that you need two explosions to take out an, any vehicle, like a non-armored vehicle. So if you're using an Amani Tech car, it's still going to take about 20 explosions from the explosive machine gun to blow up any type of Amani Tech vehicle. So even then, it's going to take a while for a jet using that type of machine gun to take you out. The best part about Amani Tech vehicles, as I said, is that each one is unique in its own ways. See, this here is the Itali GTO Stinger TT, and it is the fastest Amani Tech vehicle by far. If you play a next generation console, you can upgrade it with HSW, and it will go a ridiculous 168 miles per hour. That is faster than any other car in the game currently, even supercars. That alone is insane. Same. And I should also mention, while these vehicles do not feature explosive machine, or not explosive machine guns, but explosive uh, mines, they still feature slick mines. These are alright. They're not going to do anything crazy, but if there is somebody trying to chase you, they will get the job done. Now you will notice that while the Stinger does feature a much better top speed than the Champion, it does not feature uh, bulletproof glass. That is one thing you'll have to keep in mind. My favorite of all Amani Tech vehicles is this, the Ocelot Virtue. Now I would be willing to put the Obey Ominous EGT right up here, maybe even a little bit higher. The Ocelot Virtue and Obey Ominous EGT are electric vehicles, and for some reason Rockstar really likes electric vehicles when it comes to Amani Tech, and uh, they usually feature a lot better explosion resistance. Oh my god, I just slick mined myself. Whoa! Well, <laughs> that was a bit of a fail. But yeah, the Ocelot Virtue and Obey Ominous EGT are able to survive upwards of 10 10 sticky bombs each, which is kind of insane. Not only that, but they survive 10 homing missiles. So if somebody does manage to throw a bunch of sticky bombs on you, they're never ever going to kill you. They survive way more than a lot of the other Amani Tech vehicles. The Virtue is also incredibly fast. It features a top speed of 120, but it's really the acceleration and ridiculously good handling that allowed this car to triumph against the rest. So the point of today's video is that don't let any book get judged by its cover. Amani Tech vehicles, while they may look just like your generic supercar, are much, much better in upgrades and customization. And yes, while the Insurgent Pickup Custom is probably a bit cheaper, there are some downsides you have to keep in mind to get those sticky bomb upgrades unlocked. For example, making our way over to the bunker, we can take a look at our research. Now, I have already completed all of my bunker research, which we can see right here. But if you are new to the game or you haven't spent a lot of time researching all the bunker stuff, if you want to get the half-track quad 20 millimeter auto cannon, guess what? You have to research it from the bunker. If you want to get the machine gun on the top of your insurgent pickup custom, the heavy armor plating, all of the upgrades that you would want on your vehicles, guess what? 
you have to unlock them through your bunker. And that is also the same case when it comes to proximity mines, which are the things we used on the Insurgent and as well the half track. Because of that, if you bring your Amani Tech vehicles over to your agency, you don't need to be a certain level. You can just fully upgrade your Amani Tech vehicles, which is so much nicer than having to do all of the bunker research. Now, obviously, if you have all the bunker research done, then this part doesn't really matter. But uh, man, I can tell you for a fact that I still have PTSD on my first time playing this game, trying to get all that bunker research done while also trying to save up for vehicles I really wanted. It's just not a fun combination. So I usually recommend that people don't focus on bunker research and they rather focus on getting their hands on an auto shop so they can fully upgrade their vehicles and obviously focus on getting Amani Tech vehicles and the agency, things like that. Out of the hundreds of hours I've put into my Broke to Million account, I have never once died with a Monitech vehicle since they've been added into the game. It just doesn't happen. Nobody goes out of their way to try and kill you in an Oppressor Mark II or a Jet when they see you're in a vehicle that they can't home on and that drives 120 plus miles per hour. It just doesn't happen. And because of that, I've never died. A Monitech vehicles are super useful, whether you're just trying to traverse the map safely or mostly when you're trying to complete sail missions and you don't want to be killed if you're trying to support a friend. So I believe that Amani Tech vehicles are the most important purchase that any player can make in the game. And yes, while other armored vehicles are very impressive, I just don't see the reason to own them when this type of vehicle exists, which is much better. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.